Coming up on this version of the FRC Open Alliance Show, 9062 Critical Circuits is here from Ontario, and hopefully you've seen all the great content they've been creating. They have a ton of YouTube shorts out there documenting their progress as they go throughout the way and impacting people from all over the world showcasing what FIRST is. We'll be diving more into their design and manufacturing processes, some prototypes they've been working on, uh, and then going into maybe a couple of electrical issues they've been having, what they're looking at doing from a programming side, and talking more about their partnerships, some of the cool collaborations they've been doing, and of course a bit more about all this awesome media content that they've been putting on as well too. So let's learn more about Critical Circuits and their current progress here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Let's welcome on to the Open Line Show 9062 Critical Circuits coming in from Ontario. They're competing weeks two and three and a lot of great stuff. Hopefully you've been watching all the awesome content they've been putting out on shorts and reels as well too. But welcome in everybody. Why don't you introduce yourselves, let us know what you're doing to your team, and we're going to jump right into some of your design and manufacturing processes. Hello, um, I'm Max. Uh, I'm part of leadership and I do a bit of everything, but mostly designing. Hi, I'm Martin and I'm a design lead in our team. Um, I'm Raymond. I'm the programmer for our team, and I'll be talking about the operation we already designed for the little ones. Hi, I'm Tola, and I'm going to be talking about partnerships. All right. Um, so what we want to um, do this season is we want to build a robot that it's simple, but it's effective. Um, so different from our previous robot from last year, but when we saw the game we are really shocked because this is not what we um imagined at all so we uh straight uh apart from the um go and we went for um you know uh work 70 percent of the time but can still very competitive um but yeah um so at the uh, kickoff we got a list of priorities um and one of them is Deep plan because um, early on we figured that deep plan will be very important of how you know twelve points um, of deep plan compared to fifteen points for RP and we found it to be meta as many other teams did um, so um, we you, you can see uh, from our shorts that our mentor from early on has a very um, good climb that. Um, going to be um, almost a, our final um, climb for this year. But um, yeah. We'll talk about it, more about it later, I guess. And yeah. Yeah, for um, and one of our priority lists is also only scoring L1 to L3, which I think is pretty significant to our team. And one of the um, big reason for that is um, this year is our first time doing an elevator and we don't have any uh, full confidence um, in terms of building and fixing it during a competition so um, at the start of the season like between day day one and day two we are we know that we can only do a one stage a single stage elevator and this factor limits us um, to only do l1 to l3 however we found out that in uh, Rembrandt's 4481 Open Alliance videos that their um, coral intake can actually potentially shoot to uh, an L4 posi position, um, which opened the gates with um, most of um, some of our design. Yeah. Talk about the prototype. Um, yeah, so we can talk about some of our prototype about uh, in the early on of our season. So, uh, one of our prototype for uh, Coral is actually our 2020 free uh, off-season intake, uh, which is a claw basically. So the original prototype is um, just uh, horizontal 
the coral will horizontally go in to our intake. But however, um, the um, the dimension isn't really uh, exactly right, and we kind of scrapped this idea after like around uh, two tries. So after that, uh, we moved on to our um, second prototype of is about is like a external intake of our coral. We use this part which we have already uh, disassembled, and I believe we have posted. Yeah, exactly. Um, we this basically have two uh, horizontal rollers on uh, on our external of the coral, and we test it out with uh, flanges, and also we test it out with some uh, three sixty rollers. So th there's a prototype that we tried that we have four different size of um, rollers that can keep us like easily intake from the coral station. However, after um, building the whole prototype, we realized that uh, the mechanism is way too heavy for our uh, mechanism or our overall design, especially as um, um, we want to make the whole elevator and the carriage as light as possible. So um, for our third to fourth iteration for our coral intake, we moved on to a 3D printed version of this internal intake, which um, is inspired by Rembrandt. They're a great team, of course. And they, this uh, basically goes into um, the coral and securely attached to it. And this can also act as an intake and an outtake at the same time. And yeah, th which gives us a really good idea of um, how light can this mechanism be comparing to the one previous that we had need two uh, way bigger plates uh, that, yeah, this and and our final design, which we will talk more about later, uh, is we are using this intake as our uh, outtake and intake for coral. Yeah, we want to talk about the class. Yeah. One of the things um, real quick, if I can ask you, is that you mentioned earlier that like, hey, you know, we saw Rembrandts and they were potentially maybe shooting coral up to level four. Is that something you have actually like tried and tested yet? Or is that one of those like, hey, if it works great? Because I love your idea of like focusing on levels one through three. We had another team on Open Line Show that said the same thing too, where, hey, you know, you have to set those priorities sometimes. But have you done any sort of testing for level four scoring maybe with this type of uh, intake or grabber? We didn't do a entirely testing on that, but because in our priority list, uh, our scoring L4 is what we want compared to um, what we uh, must, like what we have to complete in this uh, competition season. So we kind of prioritize later and we want to try it out after we build the robot, which because we're not prioritize it at all uh, in the season. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so um for rp we need you know four different um levels completed so um that's why we also um going for the um ball um scoring particularly the processor um because we um attending um week two and week three um consecutively so we wanted um to prioritize what we can do um consistently and steadily and and to improve during the after season until um, we get to DCMP if we can at all. Um, so as Martin said, um, L4 is what we can test during that period of time, that huge chunk of um, weeks that we can practice and um, test that at all. So that's just another plus, but we don't prioritize at all. Um, for, for the processor, um, we chose that again because it's reliable, but we um, figured out um, in the early in the early that we want to do um, the tube or the coral more um, so that's what um, and we also want to prioritize um, reducing the amount of time between cycles as much as possible that, so that's why the um, um, design is became to be 
we can intake the um, ball uh, as fast as possible and then um, to uh, score the um, processor at the uh, same cycle. We don't have to. One of the uh, first iteration of it is we're going to take like a pole and then we're going to push the ball out and then we're going to intake. It takes a lot of time. Um, so that's why we went for this design because we are able to, hey, get the ball, in, um, so score it, and then we can score the uh, core, um, on a 1.5 cycle time. And that's really it's effective. And that's uh, what we want because we want more practices during this season. And I think it's not hard to achieve with the time we can, hey, um, not going for um, two stage elevator, going for one stage, we have more time to practices. Um, and yeah, that's our idea of um, the season constraints. But because of those constraints, we can give more time for the drivers, to, for the drive team to practice. Um, that's why we want to prioritize this season more. So yeah. is this actually uh, looking to pick up from the ground as well too, or is this specifically for getting LG off the reef? Yeah, this is also possible for uh, pick up on the ground because there's um, we are imagining there's a scenario that our alliance can only uh, like drop the ball on the ground and we can, and I think we ha need the ability to pick up also on the ground and on the reef. So that's the one of the ability we prioritize. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about what your, some of your progress in terms of uh, what you're doing for programming right now and, and electrical coming together. What's that been like for your team? Um, we're having um, mainly two issues. First is with uh, the three radio. Um, we have a total amount of three radios and two of them are broke. And um, so for the, uh, a new radio we got, there's no the lights are not on, on the BS port, which is uh, a drive station. And also, it also happens to our other radio offer power cycle on the robot. And um, also, we and the next part is about our intake. You see, we're having a time of flight sensor here because last year when we were designing the connector, we didn't consider the wire um, too much. So that it fell off a lot during computations. And this year, we are using a can and crimps, crimpers. So that is mostly stable than regular to pound connector. And for automation, we, um, you can, what you can see is we're having a, a, a wrist on the elevator. So that's, there's a chance is going to touch the two by one on the top of the elevator. Uh, we came up with two solutions. And um, so the first one, we already gave it up, but we did make a lot of progress on it, but we just found it's too hard. And so basically we do the collection detection with a um, we will approximate all our robot mechanism to a circles. Like the intake can be considered as a huge circle or just um, different circles on the that extent part. And we use a rotation matrix for that. And because we are rotating the X and Y coordinates, we can't just use cosine and sine formula. And with the rotation matrix, we can get the final position after giving the rotation matrix uh, our angle for the arm. and. That's how we do the collection detection part. And since we approximate by a circle, then um, it's really easy to do. And as industrial use, they use the two radius, detect the detective, the two read some of the two radius for the two circle you're detecting if they're touching each other. And um, to, to say if the radius, the sum of their radius is larger than their distance. And um, that's a condition. And um, but, um, also, we also need some algorithm called A star or RRT to generate the paths to go through those positions because um, as a, we, we got the collection function, we also need something to find the path. Like if we want to go from the height of zero centimeter to 75 centimeter, and now our current angle is zero degree. So that it will generate a um, set of positions like 20, that's what um, 60, uh, 6328 does for the 29 3 robot. Um, but they did it with numerical op optimization, which we don't have that much time to spend on Python because I'm mainly using uh, a Java user. Um, also, for our autonomous part, they did auto aim this year. And um, so there's a 30, I remember it's um, around 30 positions 
So we want to avoid this step three, also deal with the rotation matrix. We generate basically just input a uh, position of the reef and we flip it for the red lines. And uh, for each reef, we, we call the, um, each part of the reef a reef station. And we, we have station A to station F. F and um, we input the distance and the program will compute by itself. We also made the open source on GitHub for any team if they are interested in it. And for the autonomy part, Pathfinder doesn't have any autonomy command. Um, so we did it by our, we, we changed some line of their pathfinding command and we compile our own library. It's also public on GitHub. And I think that's all for automation. Yeah, and you can find a lot of those links, by the way, on their uh, Chief Delphi build blog, so make sure you do go check that out as well, too. Uh, and one of the things I would love to talk about as well is your team has done a great job documenting your progress well. I mean, obviously, on Fund, we love video content uh, for things, and your team has been doing such a great job with that as well. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, your approach to how you're doing uh, media and team collabs and, and how all that's working for you uh, on 9062? Okay, so the, we started off with the kickoff live stream, which was really successful. So people tuned in to see the build process, hundreds of people tuned in to see the process. I'm planning on donating the parts for the kickboard to rookie teams in the tournament match. Multiple shots were posted on YouTube, and we have a lot of people watching it, like 1.6 million views and counting since the kickoff, allowing people to families and friends to see what we've been doing, what we've been up to, keeping them updated. Streams have allowed us to connect to viewers and collaborate with 95, 80, and chat with teams like 930 and 8729. We borrowed some gearboxes from 5406, another open alliance team. We helped 5406 build their practice fields, received rules from 3161, Trinic Titans, and we've been pleased with how they've worked. They're an open alliance team with great videos. And we're very, we're very grateful for the views because they've been really helpful, basically. And today we kind of had like an interview too for the school. So basically the school, the parents can also see what we're doing as a robotics team. So basically media has been really good. Everything is updated on the YouTube, lot of views and counting. So yeah, it's really good so far. Uh, one of the interesting things too with vertical based content as well is that you're hitting kind of a different audience with that as well too, right? When you have vertical content, you're really getting a great opportunity to reach people outside of first to showcase to them what it is and really kind of spread that impact as well too. So I think, you know, to me, there's such great opportunities for teams out there to utilize vertical based shorts, reels, TikToks, things like that to reach such a huge uh, audience that is maybe not even knowing what first is in the first place, right? And showcasing like, hey, come in and check out what first as well. So kudos to your team for doing such a great job with that. I know you'll continue doing the great work with that as well too. And I can't wait to see all the future content that you keep doing. So Critical Circuits, thank you so much for taking the time. To tell us more about your progress with that. Uh, as mentioned, you're competing weeks two and three. So we can't wait to see all that happens out in Ontario. So good luck the rest of the way and keep following their build log for more continued progress and what they've been working on. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first.